Yes. The Cult of Hockey podcast by the faithful and for the faithful. I'm David Staples of the Edmonton Journal, and I'm here tonight with Bruce McCurdy. Welcome, Bruce. Hello, David. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing good, Bruce. So you see you got a cat there? Yeah, I sure do. You're, you're, I like your hair tonight. It's a little bit like Daryl on The Walking Dead. You got it going oh, yeah, on. Well, yeah, well, keyword <laughs> walking, and I mean, I'm, that that's coming soon. Right, I'm Actually, going. Actually, Daryl, if Daryl was about 65 years old, he might look a little bit like you, Bruce, now that I think of it. Huh? Do you use a, can you use a crossbow and ride a motorcycle as well? No, none of those things. It's not Daryl and my other brother, Daryl, is it? <laughs> no, that was a good one, too. That was the guy who played the in one of the inventors on Blade Runner. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah, yeah, he was the genius inventor that had all the had all the robots in his, in his uh, house. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Bruce, tonight the Edmonton Oilers not at all unexpectedly playing the third game in four nights, lost three mm-hmm. one to the Calgary Flames. They kind of ran out of gas in the game, although Bruce. Edmonton had a lot of great scoring chances, probably about four or five, alar- four or five alarmers uh, mm-hmm. with uh, Cahoon, Dreisaitl, Yamamoto, and Kulikov all getting really great chances to score. But Jacob Markstrom was outstanding this game. And, um, you know, Mike, Mike Smith had his moments too, but Jacob Markstrom was the best goalie this night and won the game, stole the game for the Flames. So credit to him. He's taken a little bit of abuse on this podcast. So Has he? Uh, yeah, now and then. Uh, so, Bruce, this is our two good things, two bad things, and two numbers podcast. And because it's an Oilers lost, we'll go with two bad things each. What is your good thing? Okay, well, uh, I think we agreed on this. I'm going to take as my good thing the uh, uh, the wonderful glove save of Mike Smith in the dying seconds of the second period uh, when the Oilers... Uh, had a late power play opportunity uh, with a 2-1 deficit and proceeded to give up a full-length two-on-one with like 15 seconds to go in the second period. And uh, Calgary executed the pass and the shot. Elias uh, um, Lindholm, Euler killer Elias Lindholm, already had both Calgary goals to this point going for the hat-trick. And he got it up and over Mike Smith's pad, but he did not get it over Mike Smith's glove, which came snapping across out of nowhere to uh, to steal the puck out of the air and keep the Oilers uh, in the game. That would have been a killer goal right then and there had it gone in, in my opinion. Um, but they just did not have the offensive uh, finish in this game. And, and full credit, Markstrom, he made some saves. And the Oilers missed the net on some shots and... Calgary, uh, they played hard, and they're always having trouble getting their passes through, you know. So, anyway, that was, the good thing was that save, which was uh, uh, the, probably the best moment in the game uh, for Oilers fans. If you count just that moment and not, say, the 10 moments that preceded it when the two-on-one developed. So, it was kind of an ugly play, but it had a happy ending. Let's put it that way. Bruce, my good thing is James Neal, and he I thought he was the best order on the ice tonight. He got promoted to the to the third line with Ryan McLeod and Josh Archibald, and uh, man, he looked like a uh, like like the James Neal that we saw more often last year. He's been I think fighting off COVID symptoms has been the talk through the year, yep. and um, sure. but he 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 played very well tonight, and he 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 started off with a. Chris Russell rushed the puck up the ice and dropped it off, and Neil came out of the corner with it, and he beat Markstrom with kind of a stinker of a goal. But it is the kind of goal that a, a really strong shooter like Neil's going to get now and then. Just because they fire the puck hard and true, they know where they're firing it, they know how to beat goalies, and he beat Markstrom on that. In some ways, his two chances in the second period were more impressive. They didn't end mm-hmm. up in goals, but he, he got a breakaway, and he actually used his body to hold off the Flames' defender. And he was fast enough to maintain the breakaway. Speed is an issue with James Neal, but full credit to him. He got off a decent shot there, you know, and, and shielded the puck and good play. I really love the next play, though. Ryan McLeod put a hard kind of shot pass towards the net. I think it was McLeod. And Neal just had a fantastic tip shot, uh, mm-hmm. just exhibiting outstanding yeah. hands on that particular play, getting it on net. 
Finally, there was a great A shot right at the end of the game off a face off that we deflected, mm -hmm. I think, a little bit on net. And um, so, no mistakes on great A chances against. Um, four major contributions, four great A shots. It's pretty good. Or, well, three, three great A shots great a and a shot. great B shot that went in the net. Mm -hmm. So, so good for you, James Neal. Great game. Well, yeah, I was good, going to I, say, I say good game. I gave yeah, him a seven, not an eight. He, he had an excellent game, and uh, more credit to him. I, I, um, uh, I don't know. This uh, yet another example of why I don't do predictions very often is I predicted that he might come out of the lineup tonight in favor of uh, possibly um, Tyler Ennis coming in because he's an emergency replacement for Kara, and they're allowed to switch out one emergency replacement for another. So I thought they might oh, use that okay. flexibility on the back-to-back -back with the aging uh, James Neal, who's had trouble with his energy levels, I think it's fair to say, throughout the season. And instead, he was about the most energetic oiler there was. I mean, that was a real nice uh, effort that he made on the play where he stole the puck, intercepted the pass, and, and, and went in on the breakaway. And, you know, he just doesn't have the legs to separate. But as you say, he was able to hold off the uh, the defender and get a pretty decent shot away. I think the shot was compromised a little bit by the defender coming back, but he still got it up and over Markstrom's pad, and he too flashed the leather on that one. And uh, as you say, that deflection was first rate. He also had a terrific chance fairly early in the first period that he was set up, and he, and he missed the net on that one. Uh, but he was, you know, in good position and getting his chances, and he found the range with his shot as the, as, uh, as the game went on. I mean, he had four shots tied with Ryan Nugent Hopkins for the most on the Oilers. And I'm going to go let my cat out. Carry on. All righty. Well, I'm going to shift gears and go to my my... My first bad thing is I'm shifting gears and going to my first bad thing here, okay? And it's uh, my first bad thing is going to be, you know, why do the Oilers always get injured against the Calgary Flames, Bruce? I wonder. I wonder. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's such a mystery, isn't it? And uh, the hit that Matthew Kachuk put on uh, Chris Russell, you know, the best you can say in, in, Kachuk's defense is that Russell put himself in an awkward position and his head was low and he, he didn't protect himself. But Kachuk also drove his head into the boards. And I'm just, I've, I'm sick of the fl the dirty flames. You know, there was a there was a slew foot on Darnell Nurse from Richie that might have been an accident yeah. or maybe not. Maybe not. And um, I was glad just, I, Nurse got up I, from I just, that. Yeah, he got up really quick. He was fine. Was it an was it well, it might have been accidental, maybe. I, it's a it's they're a dirty team, Bruce. And I, every time I play the Oilers, play them, I'm worried the Oilers are going to get injured because they're a dirty team. There, what's your bad thing? All right, we're doing two. Yeah. Bad things. Okay. Well, since you started with that, I'm going to come right back with uh, what I saw as a dirty cross check by Nikita Nesterov on Connor McDavid in the first period where McDavid was coming up the ice at high speed and uh, he, he came in the middle and Nestorov came forward with two hands either side of McDavid's body, full shaft to the stick, pow, right in the sternum, and knocked McDavid flat and uh, he got up and he carried on but he ended that shift very early, he went off and uh, I watched to make sure he'd be out for the next shift and he was but I noticed that he wasn't really attacking the defenseman too hard after that and I guess if you're a Calgary fan you say great that's exactly what we needed as an NHL fan I'd rather see the stars uh, uh, have room to move around out there without fear of taking that kind of vicious contact and to me that was a clear cut cross check I got some pushback on uh, on Twitter from people saying he just pushed him with his hands oh jeez but I invite on. you to look at my Twitter feed I have a Full speed of the play. I have a stop action of Nesterov's gloves, one to either side of McDavid with the full shaft of the stick and his arms fully outstretched. And a third one that someone else captured of the of the hit in slow motion. Uh, the contact of the of the shaft of Nesterov's stick. No part of Nesterov's hands, I don't think, even brushed Connor. Just decked him. And I guess, I don't know, it frustrates me that... 
that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, they, I mean, these are these should be the NHL's meal tickets, and, and so it's it's uh, it's it just it angers and frustrates me as a fan. I mean, it's a penalty. Call a penalty. And, you know, maybe yeah. it's even a good penalty if you're if you're sort of slowing the guy down a bit. I don't know, but it's certainly a penalty. Call the damn thing. If, if both referees didn't see that, then 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 I don't know what to say. They didn't. They of course they saw it. They're both well, watching the play. Of course they saw it. And and I'm just watching it again. The the Twitter mm-hmm. highlight and it's just a vicious cross check. Like, mm-hmm. come on, call the penalty. You're not allowed to do that. That's just ridiculous. You moronic refs. All right, Bruce, my other bad thing. My bad, my bad, is I'm picking it because it kind of symbolized the Oilers' effort, which was just a little bit short, you know. They just didn't have it. And it was, they're, they're pressing, they're down two to one in the third period. Mm-hmm. You know, there's eight minutes left. And McDavid rushes the puck up ice. He turns it over. Um, he, uh, he's come, he comes back. Calgary rushes the puck up the ice. First, they go around Chase on, who kind of, you know, he just misses the check. Then then Nurse makes a play, which I think was just epitomized the whole game because the Oilers are desperate to score, but it's a play you make when you're t- really tired and mm-hmm. you want to make a good play, but you're not you're too fatigued to really think very well on the ice. Yeah. That's how I saw this play. Mm-hmm. Because it's it's a play that you might see in peewee hockey where two two flames are rushing up the ice with the puck, full possession of the puck and coming fast, and you skate towards them. What do you think is going to happen? You know, your momentum's going one way. They're, they're coming right at you fast. There's only one thing that's going to happen at the NHL level, and it's not good, and they went right around nurse quite easily. Then, Mc, both McDavid and Dreisaitl are slow in the back check. McDavid was just slow, slow, slow through the whole back check. Leon was slow recognizing. The again, he's, he's not sharp. He, mm-hmm. He's slow recognizing the danger in that moment. When he did recognize the danger, he, man, did he ever try to get back as hard as he could. He really hustled, but it was too late. It was also too late because Mike Smith is not completely with it, and he lets the puck through his legs, and it's tapped in the net by Dylan Dubé. So it was that was the Oilers' night. It just things didn't go their way. Uh, there was they they couldn't catch a break, and there was a few mental errors. Yeah, there was a few mental errors for sure. Uh, that, that one was, uh, and you know, it was it was a bad rebound. It did kind of dribble through Smith. Yeah. And, uh, by the time uh, there was just nobody around to bail him out, basically. So yeah. Nurse Nurse was out of position. Barry was trying to defend the two on one, and he was in no position to clear the rebound. And as you say, the forward support was so getting into the frame. So. What's your second bad thing, Bruce? Yeah, well, I'll similarly go with the first goal. And uh, this was a, a, a play, like, they won the face-off in their own zone. They had possession. Uh, the the puck, I think it was Russell, battled it up to dry saddle, and he had possession just in the, I think, left face-off circle, a time to do something for it. And he looked over and he decided to pass it to Ethan Bear, except for Bear was 15 feet away and Drysaddle missed him with the pass by three feet because he, I don't know whether he thought Bear was skating and Bear wasn't skating. And so Bear started, tried to go after the pass and wound up taking himself out of the play. And then it just unraveled from there and, and uh, it was just sort of a lame turnover of a puck the Oilers had full control of and it was just an example of the team I thought they you know I, I didn't think their legs were that bad tonight for three and four but mentally they just didn't they were not sharp and that was in evidence uh, uh, throughout much of the game but uh, no more so I, I think than on that uh, than on that first goal yeah Leon's initial pass there is just he never makes that pass unless he's just, he just wasn't right tonight. And he, I, I was tempted to give him a two in the game grades, which is for a terrible game. But I, in the end, I gave him a three. Mm-hmm. But, you know, on that goal, like, he, not only did he turn it over, then he, he was late to the slot to cover the shooter, right? And Chris Russell, you know, he's a defensive defenseman. He didn't stop the pass, clear pass right out to the slot. Very tough play for him, too, there. So Leon had a really bad game. He had five major mistakes, grade A scoring chances against it, even strength. 
um, he he couldn't he just couldn't get the puck on net either. Like he had all these great chances to score, including a great feed for McDavid in this in the kind of mid slot in the third period on a three on two, and he missed the net. He he just it was not his night at all. But I didn't give him a two because and and here's my number for the night, Bruce. He played twenty eight forty nine. So the coach just kept going back to him, back to him, back to him. And I couldn't, like, it, it, it's, as tough a night as he had and as weak as some of his play was, just didn't feel like a two was fair for someone that was being counted on so heavily on the team and, and was, you know, hustling right to the end, like on that last goal against. He did hustle when he figured it out. So I gave him a three for a poor game, which is what it was. And, um, yeah, I don't know about, I don't know about using him that much, Bruce. Um in a game that didn't like we're we're in gar let's face it, we are in garbage time for the Oilers here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why not go with Ryan McLeod for 20 minutes that game? He was skating fine and playing well and and flying out there. I just I just think you gotta lay off. You don't you don't want to ride your horses um into the ground right now. This isn't the moment to do it. And that wasn't the game to do it. I'm going to rip Dave Tippett for that. Uh, I think that's bad coaching. Full stop. Except for I'm not going to stop. I'm going to continue to rip Dave Tippett. Uh, 28 minutes and 49 seconds. This is the third game in four nights. Let's not forget that part. Uh, Let's remember that time last year, which Dave Tippett should remember, uh, when he played Leon for 29 minutes in a back-to-back situation in Phoenix, against the Coyotes, that was a game where Leon was so tired he couldn't even skate to the bench at the end of overtime because he had no legs to even go off for a change. And his game fell apart after that. And it was a similar situation. You know, they played a big game Saturday night, traveled, played a big another big game Sunday night, and he, and he wore the guy out. And 28 minutes and 49 seconds, including 11.55 in the third period. Like, literally, Leon played 60% of the third period of this game. So here are the league leaders. Most time on ice for a forward this season, any NHL player. Number one, Leon Dreisaitl, April 29th versus Calgary. Look at that, 28 minutes and 49 seconds. At the time of the season where, and I wrote about this the other day, one of the priorities of the team should be to to at least give their stars a modicum of rest. Like, you can continue to rely on them. I'm sure you continue to give them 20 or 22 minutes, but these 25, 27s, 28s, that's got to stop. And then a three and four nights situation, and especially, you know, this game was lost when it got to 3-1. And yet he still kept going out to these horses and putting them back out there yeah. and back out there. I think it's insane, David. I think that's a really bad series of decisions of the coach to keep throwing him out there. Maybe it's one decision that just kept kept uh, propagating itself. But uh, that's um, that, that, that is uh, very short-sighted because uh, the orders didn't need this game. They just didn't need this game, and there's there's no reason to expend that kind of capital on 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 this game or really any game for now until the end of the regular season. So that one. Uh, oh, by the way, Leon tonight he led the Oilers in ice time in number of shifts. This forwards, or really it's all Oilers. Number of shifts, average shift time, most power play time, most shorthanded time, most even strength time. Like every category, Leon was number one. And this on a night where you and I could clearly see six minutes into the first period that he wasn't really sharp. So maybe that's the night to dial it back and, and have him play 18 minutes and not 28. But I just don't get it. I don't get it either, Bruce. It was well said. And that's that's a very fair and apt criticism you just made of the coach. He he should, uh, and I hope he hears it. I you know I doubt he would, but I hope he hears it from somebody. You know, maybe in the media after the game questioning him, like, why are you playing this player that much? Anyway, uh, what's your number? My number was his time on ace. There, what's your number? <sighs> well, I'm going to go with the number thirteen because uh, I want to be put on my happy face and say the orders are thirteen points ahead of the Flames. 
And the Flames got seven games left. They ain't catching the Oilers. Of course, they're pretty desperate to catch the Habs. They're putting the pressure on. I hope they Habs. Do. They played well tonight. They, you know, they were desperate. Mm-hmm. They were rested and they were desperate. And those mm-hmm. two factors together, um, you know, th- this to me actually, this is a game where our scoring chance count. Like, no matter what the stat is, it doesn't describe every game. And I'm not sure our scoring chance count accurately describes that game. I thought Calgary was the better team. For, for much of the night. And and uh, they, I, I agree, Bruce. I think you're right. Yeah. They, but they were, uh, uh, they haven't been the better team this season, and that's why Edmonton is 13 points ahead of them in the standings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The reason the Flames are that much behind, Bruce, the orders is because they suck. They really <laughs> suck. Okay. They didn't um, suck tonight, but. Uh, <laughs> We can have our mad on Matthew Kachuk and Nikita Nesteroff, but uh, they, uh, they, man, they played Lind- well. Actually, Lindholm's a things. player, isn't he? Yeah, they've got some good players. They, you know, Lindholm's a good player, and um, I'm trying to think of someone else, but I can't off the top of my head. But they've got lots of good players, I'm sure. All right. Kachuk's a good player. He is. Yeah. And uh, doesn't make him a nice guy. Markstrom was a very, very good player tonight. Yeah. Bruce. Let's uh, let's leave it there. Let's leave it there for tonight. We got what Saturday night against whom? Against the Flames. Uh, at least at least the orders are home now and can rest. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. And uh, and we'll go from there. It's three and four nights. I was tempted to make that my number because that was you know I think that was a huge factor in this game. Off Whatever. Me. They'll be they'll have a couple of days to rest. I'm not sure they're going to be rested. On Saturday night, when they had uh, so many players in 22, 23, 25, 28 minutes in this game, but uh, I guess they're used to playing a lot, and a day off will do them some good. So uh, I want to see them come out and thump the flames on Saturday night. To be honest, you know they are like an exercise. <laughs> like I'm sure an exercise <laughs> physiologist would agree with everything you've said about Drysaddle. You know, but part of me thinks he is a young man in the prime of his life. You it's know, a horse. Condition. I mean, we know this. So he's probably going to be just fine. Right. It, but nonetheless, it's not kind of, I, don't, I think that's probably not peak coaching there. So leave it at that. Bruce, thanks for talking tonight. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. And in the meantime, and in between times, this has been another edition of the Cult of Hockey podcast. <laughs>